In this episode of the world's top fitness, health, and entertainment podcast, Mind Pump, we answer fitness and health questions, four of them, but the way we open the episode is with some introductory conversation. We talk about studies and current events. We have a lot of fun. By the way, if you want to just fast forward to your favorite part, go to mindpumppodcast.com. The whole podcast is timestamped. Otherwise, do what we recommend. Start from the beginning and come on the journey. So I'm going to give you a breakdown of what happened in today's episode. We started by talking about TV back in the day. When we go back in the day, we're talking about when Doug was a kid. Way back. Yeah, it's at the turn of the century, a long time ago. Mm, antennas and all. Then I talked about how Adam uh, had an insecure moment yesterday, asking uh, one of our staff members if he looked Aww. fat, although he looked amazing, in my opinion, especially because he was wearing Viore clothing. Viore is athleisure wear. That makes you look good, even if you're fat, right, Adam? Yeah. By the way, Viore is one of our sponsors, uh, so you do get a discount if you go check out their clothes and use our code. Here's what you do. Go to vioreclothing.com. That's V-U-O-R-I clothing.com forward slash mind pump and get 25% off your entire order. Then we talked about the red sky outside here in the Bay Area. It looks like Mars. Yeah. That led us to talk about private firefighters and their role in fighting fires. I talked about Justin's wife looking really good. She's looking <laughs> real fit because she's following MAPS Strong. I'm a little worried about you. That's one of our uh, our workout programs. It's actually one of our more popular workout programs uh, among women, but we have a lot of different MAPS workout programs and bundles. If you want to follow a workout that's designed by trainers with 20 years of experience, in other words, workouts that actually work to speed up your metabolism, burn body fat, build muscle, go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and go check them out. Then I talked about the movie adaptation of the Disney cartoon Mulan and my disappointment. We talk about Facebook no dragon. and Facebook's backlash that's happening a little bit right now. Uh, Adam brought up Madden 2021 and their new character with a special move. He can Ooh. kneel when you push any button. Super cool. Uh, I talked about a study showing that people who can subconsciously pick up patterns tend to also believe in God. That's kind of weird. That led Justin to talking about hidden Mayan cities Naturally. Uh, that we're finding with LIDAR. That's a real thing, by the way, LIDAR. Um, I talked about Dar. how my neck is no longer sore because I am using a customized, individualized pillow from Pluto Pillow. This is a company where you go on their website and you li they literally design a pillow for you. If you've never had an individualized pillow, you got to try this out. It makes a huge difference. It's a game changer. In your sleep. And because you listen to Mind Pump, you're going to get 10% off. Here's what you do. Go to PlutoPillow.com. That's P-L-U-T-O Pillow.com forward slash Mind Pump. Use the code Mind Pump for 10% off. That was the beginning of this podcast, about 40 minutes, and then we got into the questions. Here's the first one. How do you develop your upper chest? So we talk about our favorite upper chest exercises. The next question, what are the consequences and symptoms of eating too little fat? The next question, does running with a plastic bag over your body help your body burn more calories? And the final question, can smoking weed impact your gains. In that portion of the episode, we recommend hemp oil extracts instead of weed because hemp oil uh, has way less THC, but is higher in the other beneficial cannabinoids for things like inflammation, helping you sleep, reducing anxiety. Our favorite hemp oil uh, company is Ned. And because you listen to Mind Pump, you get a discount. Notice the theme here. We give you discounts on everything. Yeah. Just go to helloned.com. That's H-E-L-L-O- ned.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump. Get 15% off your first purchase. And one more time, if you want to check out our workout programs, if you're serious about getting in shape, if you want to follow workout programs designed by trainers, not by marketers, go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. Do you guys remember when remote controls had two buttons? Do you remember that? When TV remote controls like AB, AB, select start? No, that's AB, 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 select, select start. start. Select start. Nintendo. Nintendo. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm talking about remote controls for TV, dude. Oh. Where you would just, it was just up and down. That's all you could do. And then if you had to go to the other one, which was A or B, remember you had to click A or B to get mm. another set of channels? Yeah. You have to uh, get yeah. up yeah. and walk over to the TV. So my dad always had remote controls because he had kids. So he'd be like, Sal, go put it on B. Like, oh, yeah. walk over there. <laughs> 
I'm bad. I can't wait till they invent something. You know? Dude. What was what was A and B? It was at UHF VHF. Was that how it ran? I don't do, even know. Do you know? Do you know how that I breaks down? Doug, Doug, no Doug you should know. You were around before it. No idea. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I didn't have a like TV growing channels. up no. at all. No. No, no they, TV at all growing up. I had no TV growing when up. When was your first wow. TV? Doug used Doug. After I moved out. The, didn't your family used what uh, like a chisel they had, and they had a, wagons and a, and a, and a rock? Yes, <laughs> Ten Commandments. No, a really that was it. You so as a child, you had zero television. Uh, if I went to a friend's house, I had television. Okay, but at my own home, no television. So was it? But okay, now it was that a common thing? Then you go to kids' house and watch TV, or did oh you, yeah, okay, I was hungry for it. Uh, <laughs> I needed some Gilligan Island and. Uh, Batman, you know, uh, back yeah. in the day. The pal. Uh, that yes, one? yeah. You that know, one, of course. It just goes to show you, so people Adam are like- Mar- like, Marianne. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. people are like, what would happen if we didn't have like lots of TV or media or whatever? We Doug would happen. Each, we look, talk to each other. Well, look what a good guy he is. He's like yeah. the best person yeah. I've ever met in my life. be a lot better. That's because of no TV? Probably. That's Absolutely. Yeah. It probably I'm is, a testament to it. He's such a great guy. I don't know. I have a theory that he's probably a TV junkie now. No, I was when I got- my own place. Yeah, really? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I was mm-hmm. binging it. You yeah. had to experience it. Yeah, but end. then now it's like, eh, most of it's just garbage. What? How old were you when you saw your first Playboy, Doug? Because that was a big deal. Oh, yeah, that's uh, a pivotal uh, moment. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. I had a friend that whose dad had some in his basement, and we discovered them. Wow. So mm. I was Life fairly changing. young. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Marilyn Monroe, right? I wanted uh, to go to his cover? house, too. He had, a, he had a TV and Playboy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's the... Wow. That's the kid now, how did that, now, exploded. how did that kid turn out? Where is he I at? don't know. Where is he at in life today? I think he's in San Quentin. <laughs> 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 Honestly, I have no idea where Too he's much. at. Too much. Dude, yesterday, uh, yesterday I, I forgot about this. It made me laugh so hard I forgot, but I wrote it down because I'm like, <clears> i got to bring <throat> this up on the show. Mm. So Adam walks in the studio and says the, the, the most non-manly thing I've ever heard him say. <laughs> you walked in, and I think it was to Andrew. You're like, hey, Andrew, nobody else answered this. Hey, yeah. Andrew. Yeah. Do, do I look fat? <laughs> does, this, does this make me look fat? I'm like, no. If you guys can't answer this. I know what you're going to say. No, yeah. but it's, yeah. it's, uh, you don't sound like you're fat. I wanted a true answer. You know what I'm saying? I, I, knew, I, would, going, I knew I wouldn't get from you. Some objectivity. Yeah, 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 not like, yeah, For, yeah. What do you mean? You, you don't think we're going to tell you if you're fat? You yeah. know we're going to tell uh, you if yeah. you look fat. That's the yeah. problem. I say, yeah, I don't want that. I want like someone like an honest opinion. Yeah. You want to comfort? No, I just look a little yeah, husky yeah. these yeah, days. That's yeah. all. Somebody who I can fire. That's who I want. You look gorgeous, Adam. Actually. You look perfect. He's like, what about now? He turned yeah, around. Bill, what, about, yeah. Yeah. what about now? Yeah. So why'd you ask that? What was the deal? I, I was just ordering feeling, clothes. I, or hey, what? I'm not fucking immune to feeling insecure every once in a while. I felt a little insecure. For oh, them. that was a real deal? Yeah, it was a, a moment. Really? Mm. I'm not allowed to have those. Oh, you're handsome, dude. <laughs> you know? We need to, you know, you're you're I'm, handsome. You look I don't good. Want, uh, we need to get you guys give him some no, love No, I don't. I look all right. You know, I, I feel good. I think you look great. I feel good, but uh, I have. I really haven't- The uh, show turned into The View all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, right? It's like, <laughs> let me just pour my heart out. My feelings yeah. how I feel about myself right now. No, I just, uh, I haven't, you know, it's funny. It's funny that we started with this television talk, because uh, ironically, this was the conversation with Katrina and I. I feel like we've been watching too much TV. So we we literally this 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 week uh, there's been no television after Max goes to bed it's been like back to reading or growing doing like her and I are working on stuff with real estate right now and so uh, I think a lot of that like I think I can get caught in these like lulls of oh working all day busy oh then I get my time with my son and then oh I want to veg oh so you thing. just haven't been active yeah I just have I haven't been my normal active self. And so I've, I've felt myself in a bit of rut. And I always know because when I try and kickstart myself with some consistency, it doesn't happen. And I fall back in that, oh, it's just relax. We'll watch a couple shows or what do I thought. Mm. And I really think that it stems from that because I, whenever I have like a really productive evening where I read or I'm learning something that has nothing to do with watching television and just melting my brain, I also tend to wake up the next day motivated to – Eat right, train well, do all those things. It's like a momentum growth thing mode. It is. It's growth mode. Yeah, it really it, yeah. D- it it is. And when I'm not feeling that way, I'm down on myself a little bit. So uh, yeah, I thought know. you were going to say like watching TV made you feel insecure because of the, the fit bodies and stuff. No, I thought you were going to go that's in that stupid. Yeah. No, no, not like that. At all. <laughs> you look good, bro. First of all, out of all of us, when we're modeling our sponsor Viore's clothes, you look the best. Yeah, you got. I do. You got the great it proportions. You the best. You do. You got the face and everything. <laughs> so, I wouldn't feel bad if I were you. <laughs> yeah, you were going all right there until you said the face thing. We know I got the fat mm. face. No, 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 I didn't say fat face. Yeah. You got the handsome face, mm. dude. Well, they're rolling out all the, the, the new fall stuff, man. I'm excited. Like, 
Dude, I, I, I put out a request for a flannel like a long time ago. I should probably like hit them up again and see if they're going to make are, that happen. Are you going to just do the, the top button like you always do? Yeah. You're and such a mountain Joe call. actually DM'd me yesterday. I forgot to tell you guys that. He wants to link up again, so we'll have him come back out here. Dude, they're, oh. cr- they are crushing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Viore is crushing. They're yeah. becoming a mainstream brand. Yeah, yeah. No, it's becoming a household name. It was definitely one of those brands when we first started working with them that was like like only the cool kids knew. It's yeah. kind of like, oh, that's cool. You, oh, you haven't heard of them? You got to check them out. It's like going uh, full on mainstream now. Yeah. Totally well, I was like, I was grabbing just my clothes, you know, through the whole thing of like evacuating, and I noticed like I just grabbed a lot of like the the new stuff that I had ordered, you know, and just because like it's new, and it's like I'm just like okay with like getting rid of the old stuff, but like redoing my whole like wardrobe is so easy. Like they have like stuff for whatever I want to wear. Yeah, you know? dude. Yeah. Speaking of uh, evacuating and stuff, so we you know, wake up this morning, you know, here in San Jose, go outside, and it looks like Mars. Yeah. yeah. It looks like it's weird. It's like it, yellowy orange. It's, it's kind of weird. The whole okay. So I just watched Total Recall with my son the other day, and and they, and he travels to Mars, and uh, everything's red. Mm. That's what it looks like right now. It's outside. like you're gonna walk outside, and all of a sudden your eyes are gonna pop out of your head. <laughs> Get to the chopper. Yeah. No, Dude. it's it was it's all red outside. The sun. It looks like the 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 sun in Star Wars. Remember when uh, Luke Skywalker's like, like standing outside? His, oh, I don't his, remember that part. His uncle's. Of course you do. Yeah. And there's the suns behind. It's like the red glowing. You know, special sun. It looked like that, and, and but it didn't really smell too much like smoke. And I read up on this. I'm like, why does it look so bad, but I don't smell the smoke? Apparently, the smoke is so high in the atmosphere that it's not necessarily mixing with the breathing air. Mm. So the air quality in some parts of the Bay Area are not that bad. Really? But when you look up, in some parts, some parts, so, according terrible. to Apple, it's terrible. Mm. In some areas. So I've never even seen that. I didn't know that was a, a feature on the Apple phone until like recently. Oh, they have air quality as like part of the yeah, weather? Yeah, it's like when you, yeah, when you look at the weather and you look at the temperature normally, it just, you know, 78. And it all, but now like the screen is gray and it says like air quality, poor, mm-hmm. unhealthy, don't go outside. Yeah, fear, fear. Your yeah, neighbor fear. has COVID may die. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but it is weird to see that, right? So my in-laws live in Vegas and I guess they were having really high winds. Mm. And so all the smoke was getting like like hardcore blown and super hot. It's also super hot over there, right? 110, 115. And their air quality reached such a bad uh, point. I think it was yesterday that they were literally like, they said, do not go outside. Do not open windows. The worst air quality measure, like rating you could get, whatever it is, red or whatever, they get, they had yesterday. Oh, wow. To the point where they were literally telling people, do not go outside. So is this all the Central Valley fire, like the smoke coming from there, you think? Yeah, or, this is more yeah. the valley, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Because when I was there this weekend, the valley was worse than the bay was. Was it? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So what it looks like today for us was like what it looked like for them just the other day. So I think it's coming from that direction right oh, now. Oh, man. It, it, what, what did they say? The, the gender reveal party started? I know we talked about that. Yeah. What are they doing hey, with these know, stupid sp- parties? It's enough speaking of the fires like well, uh done i read like just after it was right after that episode where we talked about uh the private firefighters justin and yeah if it was like a show thing or it's a real thing yeah, like yeah. the next day i'm reading like i don't know it was one of my like newsletters hustle or something like that and the up in that in it is they talk about private firefighters and so the average is three hundred dollars to five thousand dollars an hour to hire a private team to now, come what is it? Your house. What are you required to do to become a private firefighter? Do you, uh, I'm assuming that you have to go through uh, same similar training and stuff. Does I would, anybody of know? Of course, I would, yeah. And of is course, it, you would have to. I mean, do they normally work for like the regular fire department, but then they do that on the side, or is this its own company? You know, that just I hires mean, these guys. Out? I would think it. Maybe Doug can research this for us. I mean, I don't know what the hell you would research here, but it's. It, I would imagine it's p- like firefighters fire that are either one, yeah, like badasses, right? Yeah. Like elites. <laughs> uh, either firefighters that are retired, right? That are just retired and no longer mm-hmm. uh, uh, serving anymore, right? Or it's like they, their shifts are always like crazy, right? They do like yeah. three on, and then they have like four or five off, right? And then they're like three full days. So maybe they have the option on one of those days to go out there and fight fires. Like, I don't it's know one of those works. jobs where it's like you're either doing nothing or you're doing mm. the most difficult thing of all time. Like yeah. that's the two speeds that they're in. Either there's nothing going on or, oh shit. It, and it's back-breaking labor when there's fires like this because a lot of what they have to do is jump in and dig and you know create space and it's just you're working and working and working. So it makes sense that they'd get paid that much. 
uh, to come in and help out. So. Well, isn't like seventy five percent of the job like accidents and stuff like that? Isn't that what most like firefighters are having to deal with? Like, oh yeah, like, like like EMT stuff. Yeah, like yeah. most of their most of the stuff is rolling up on accidents. And so shit. it makes up four point three percent of the nation's total uh, firefighters, but it's uh, it, it's it's growing because of a growing trend towards privatization. So I'm assuming the way it would work is the state has its firefighters. And then when they when it exceeds their capacity, then they go and well, hire private. And this is interesting because this is sort of the uh, the the you know the logistics and sort of the politics behind like you know how they have to like really assess like do we have enough manpower uh, to control you know the the fire where it's at and how fast it's coming you know for this particular area or should we just kind of let it go through this area and now really like get ahead of it and you know like start repositioning and and, and fortify you know and just let it burn through this part of the town and so it's like they have to make those tough decisions and to then kind of you know maybe you're in a position where you're in that area or that they're just kind of mowing through and you want to hire mm. maybe i mean like if, a, I, if i had a 10 million dollar plus house i would do it in a heartbeat oh yeah it's a no-brainer to hills and yeah if you, to- if you if you have a house that's worth that which i'm sure there's a bunch of people listening right now that be that think it's like some elitist bullshit that it's just like oh i can't that's terrible those people should be helping with everybody else but it's like if you have well, a house they're paying for it it's their business it's well their that's problem. how i feel i mean it's like if you have if you have the money to do that and you have a house that's that that expensive and like to your point justin maybe the team goes hey this it's too late for us to try and save this whole town. We got to start mm. planning for the next town. I would hope that I'm in a position that I can afford to. So to Doug do just pulled up an article. This is interesting. That okay. So here's what I think is happening. I think a lot of these private firefighters are employed by insurance companies, and uh. they're deployed by insurance companies to save. So if an insurance company is covering these properties, it could cost them more oh, money yeah. that makes sense. in paying out the damages than it would to pay firefighters oh, to go and protect wow. them. Interesting. That makes a lot of sense. So that makes that makes a, a ton of sense right there, you know? Yeah. yeah, right. No, if you're insuring a $10 million house, you're like, go spend the tens of thousands of dollars to save that house or else we're going to be cashing this. People. Exactly. Oh, wow. it's, it's just it's them saving money. Very oh, interesting. Well, that, I didn't realize that's how it worked. I yeah. thought it was like more like a, you call them because you want a, your, your, your house saved versus mm. like an insurance company taking care of it for you. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Justin, I want to make yeah. a comment, give give your wife a compliment. Her, She's looking um, pretty fit and strong. You hitting on my wife, These, bro? Huh? <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> Not, well, I did text her the other day and I said, you look good. Wow. No, I didn't do that. I didn't yeah. do that. Oh, but that she's, you. she's yeah. looking very- Salami. She's that's looking very- okay. yeah. Yeah. That's, She has my name under yeah. salami. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> good. Long, now I know who hey, you are. Long legs. Yeah. That's, 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 <laughs> long legs. <laughs> no, that's short legs. Energy. <laughs> Come on, man! You come <laughs> with his short legs. Yeah, no, oh, that was that hey, was like the worst cut. That good, was like the last Viore commercial, yeah. wasn't it? You like, got good. A, you got good turnover <laughs> though, man. When I see yeah. you run. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Back, no, all seriousness. She's been working really hard at it. So I, you know, I'm sure she'll. That's appreciate what she said. That. She said she's following uh, a lot of the programs to the T. She's running strong right now. Yeah, she? she's running math strong right now. And kind of a funny story. Like, so she was here at the studio uh, when we were like still evacuated and everything, and we were just trying to kill time and she was out there working out and she was doing the part of the program where basically you know you have cheat curls so mm-hmm. like she's able to kind of like add some english to 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 the lift and whatnot and she takes a lot of pride in her form and technique and like i've really helped kind of hone in a lot of these mechanics and things for her and uh i guess adam like walked by and like kind of looked over and kind of kept walking and court was like oh my god i hope he knows i can actually do a real curl <laughs> You know, the like irony really was I didn't even notice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> she was so think. self-conscious about it. Dude. That's so great. Katrina's yeah. the same way, though. You know, she's like so. But I'm like, I love that too, though. Like that's like to me one of the most attractive qualities is to see like good form, of right? Course. Yeah. Like, yes. I don't know if that's a trainer thing or uh, what, but like when you see somebody that just has beautiful technique, I'm sure that was part of my whole you know attraction oh, yeah, know, no, initially. No. Well, Jessica's a trainer, so she's always telling me how my form is off. Oh. That's, that's oh, that's good. Your, your that's left arm is uh, lagging a little bit. Turn your left <laughs> foot forward. Can you? Yeah, maybe pull. Oh my more. god, that would drive you crazy. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it definitely can, but to her, you know, to, on her side, she gotta turn I, the Enya up, dude. Yeah. You know? I do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta do that. <laughs> yeah, is the Enya not loud enough on here? Let me crank it up for you. <laughs> you know, we haven't. Li- we have She hasn't picked the radio station in a long time. Oh, that's oh, good. Yeah. yeah. Now it's always it's always me that picks it, but yeah, she does that. Yeah. Sal, turn your right foot a little bit. Uh, maybe you push a little bit left foot. I'm like, oh my god! Yeah, you know? and then she's like, you do that to me. I'm like, yeah, I guess you're right. 
I gotta take. I gotta take your advice. Yeah, I guess. Anyway. Dude, we watched uh, Mulan, the new uh, movie adaptation of the. That's right. They went right to the streaming, uh, so you could get it through uh, Disney Plus. Right. I was so excited to watch it. You guys haven't seen it, right? No, I haven't okay. seen it. Yeah, I, I was, was going to. so excited to watch it and I was left disappointed. Really? Yeah, the kid. Oh, no. I, heard, I heard otherwise. Now, who told you it was good? Do you have so friends that watched it? Katrina's like it? Uh, brother actually just, we just were talking about this weekend, said it was so good that he would watch it a second time with us. Really? Wow. Yeah. Is he reliable? No. Okay. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. But all right. either is Sal. I'm glad, I'm glad to say <laughs> so. So I, neither one of these. Nobody's winning here. Yeah, I gotta watch it for myself. I'm like, this doesn't do me any good right here. I've got Larry on one side telling me I gotta watch. Uh, I got Sal saying it sucks. I'm like, well, so both of them. I, don't. I, I feel like I'm gonna wait this out. <laughs> well, so 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 far the the movie adaptations that they've done are like what Beauty and the Beast, uh, Aladdin. I think they did Cinderella. If I'm not mistaken, Lion King, Jungle like, Book. They've done okay. a ton. All of them have been great because yeah. they've definitely gone back to the original and haven't changed it so much that it's kind of different. Gives you the old feels. Mulan took out some of the characters that kids loved growing up watching. They've added some new characters in there that they didn't really develop very well. There's no little dragon guy? No, Mushu's not in there. Oh, no, spoiler oh, alert. They completely well, eliminated uh, Mushu. And my my daughter was pissed. Yeah. Yeah, like... Like, <laughs> like how would they do that? She yeah. was waiting for Mushu to show up till the very end. And then we turn it off and she's like... Mm. She like goes no, up to no show. Yeah, goes up to bed and I'm like, "What's the matter, honey?" She's like, "No Mushu, I hated it." I'm like, "All right, so." But it wasn't I didn't like it that much. I really didn't mm. think it was So that I good. wonder so I haven't seen the cartoon version yet. You've never seen the cartoon? What? No, I didn't. Oh, oh, it was great. Yeah, that's a good cartoon, dude. Yeah, so I haven't watched the cartoon, so I'm wondering if I just go straight to the movie like maybe I won't care. Yeah, probably. Because if that's true. If, if that's the reviews cuz the, the Rotten Tomatoes gave it a decent review. Anything over 60 60 in Rotten Tomatoes is de- worthwhile to like pay attention to, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I know viewers didn't view it as high. I think that's what you were talking about. Sarah, yeah, 50 right? something percent. Right. So and a lot of times that happens when people don't stay true to like the original story. Cuz you have expectations. Yeah, exactly. That was what ruined it for yeah. me. I had certain expectations. Like Beauty and the Beast uh, the Beast hit that out of the park. Yeah. You know? I liked the Lion King. Uh, they did great. The, except for the the bad guy wasn't like quite as sinister. That's as, true. As, but that was my only criticism, but I liked it overall. That's true. What's your guys' favorite Disney movie or cartoon? Do you guys have a favorite? Yeah, Sword oh. in the Stone. Oh, that's a good oh, one. Oh, yeah, that's a good that was, one. It's, uh, and that one I think is just because it's the one I watched when I was a kid. When I was a kid, yeah. I watched that one over and over. I watched and over. the Robin Hood, uh, the, the the cartoon one. You know, oh, where yeah. he's like the yeah, he's like a, a that's a great one too. Fox or whatever. Yeah, I yeah. like that one. There was uh, there was the Fox and the Hound. You guys ever watched that? Was I that just watched that the other day. Yeah, I loved that. It yeah. wasn't that popular. Uh, I liked that one, and of course, Lady and the Tramp. Watched that one a million times. Uh, there, yeah, they have some good. Pinocchio was pretty good. Although now there's like conspiracy yeah, theories around Pinocchio. Pinocchio. Well, yeah, definitely. If you go on the ride at Disneyland, like it, it takes you towards like the was it Pleasure Island or whatever. Like that whole thing got real creepy real fast. Yeah. I was like, what is this? I don't remember this part. Yeah. There's a conspiracy theory on it. What? Yeah, dude. That oh, it's like about yeah. like abducting kids and it's about what human trafficking. Yeah, dude. Yeah, what? if you can, if you take it just in little clips of like what they say, it like you could make like little crazy conspiracy. Like out they're of kidnapping it. kids and bringing them. To yeah. Pleasure Island. Yeah, it's a Pleasure yeah, Island. It's like, oh it's, like it's like some way back then. You I, know, you know like what? I now. feel like we live in like the like most amazing time for conspiracy theories. Oh, are you kidding me? Because this is the there's, best time there's for it. so much content. Well, there's so much is, dis- misinformation out there and, and that, weird dis- that, that's readily available that it's not hard to mix enough things to align. You know, like those videos where like, they make all the numbers all align. Like, Somebody oh, needs to this. check check on Alex Jones. Yeah, yeah. and let's see how he's doing. <laughs> well, he's well, probably dead now. Well, I mean, okay, too much information. Conspiracy theories sometimes are true. Oftentimes they're not true. But why do people come up with them in the first place? To make sense of stuff that is hard to make sense out of. So when things happen that just seem... Remember September 11th when when, when that happened? Yeah. It just seems so crazy. It seems so surreal to watch the buildings fall inside yeah. their own footprint. It was so footprint. out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah and then the, the way they, they fell in their own footprint and what happened and what? how could this be possible? And that spurred, and to this day, there's conspiracy theories around that that just What's happened. the well, statistic on that? There are statistics on like, uh, like 90-something percent of the time it's the obvious answer. Yeah. Uh, there's, yeah, there's like a I forget. Occam's razor, right? Is, is that, that what that all is, is that what it is? Like, yeah, I know there's like a stat on that, like you know, like ninety something percent. Yeah, it's of the a time. very high percentage that it's the the most obvious thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is. And sometimes weird, you know, hard to believe stuff happens. So what do we have? We have a pandemic that's we haven't experienced, you know, in our lifetime. So that alone is gonna 
people are at home not doing anything. Your 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 mental health is probably suffering yeah. right now, especially if you're already on the brink. We have social media that spreads things did like you, crazy. Did you read that Facebook article I sent over to you? Oh yeah. yeah. What did you think of that? I think Facebook. So the article talks about a guy who. Well, actually, I actually can't say that they're they're non-binary, so it's, they're yeah, they're they. You, That's what they okay. said in the article. Okay. But they. Um, uh, left Facebook because they think Facebook is not doing enough to stop the spread of dangerous political information or dangerous information. Yeah, yeah. that incites like hate and, and uh, violence. Based off of this person's pers- particular person's opinion. I, here's the thing: Facebook is in a very. First of all, they have a when you, whenever you have a lot of power, and they are as a company, they have the most users of any other company in the world. And they have the most information on their users uh, of any company in the world, and and they're arguably one of the more powerful, if not the most powerful, media you know source. Right? Would be Facebook, extremely powerful, largely credited for Trump's victory in 2016. I know that the the Democrats really pissed off about that and said Facebook didn't do enough to prevent meddling or whatever. And then the you know the the the, the Republicans say that Facebook is. You know, liberal leaning, and they they silent. Here's the thing: they're so powerful, they're gonna be blamed for everything. Yeah. And because they've already taken the stance that they edit the stuff that's on their platform, now no matter what they do, someone's gonna be pissed off. Yes. Uh, if now, if they had always opened up and been like, well, we're they're not, not editing- they're not neutral. Exactly. So it well, leaves them open. So for what this. what I what I read into that is that they they're feeding into it because it just creates more traffic, right? Yeah. Because the easy they, they monetize off it. right. The easy way to solve this would be like just eliminate all political shit on Facebook. It's mm-hmm. like that's we're just going to say this platform is to connect to no. families and friends, like it would originally started as. But that's the most shared when it's stuff. charged is when everybody's going there and like arguing, right? And th- what I thought was interesting about that article too is that uh, because until that article, I've read more recent stuff about uh, Facebook being leaning liberal, and it's more conservatives that are angry at Facebook, uh-huh. and that was the complete opposite. He was like somebody who was saying that the he he they promoted things that were more charged and more conservative leaning and uh, attributing the actual the election top- winning to Trump because well, again of it probably winning. goes to the whole algorithm of feeding you exactly like what you want to see in your own bias yeah well the top track the, the top pages on Facebook politically speaking with the most traction you can actually look them up what the top ones are a lot of them are conservative they get more views and more shares than other pages but it's users that are doing the sharing and are spreading the stuff. Um, so that feeds into the oh you're not you know you're 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 biased in one direction. However, when it comes to blocking pages, um, there's evidence to show that they may be blocking more conservative pages. Again, here's the That's problem. That's where it's interesting. Yes, and here's the problem. The problem is for Facebook. Here, this is where they're screwed. They are not neutral and they are powerful. They're going to be targeted yep. no matter what they do. They're going to piss someone off and they're going to be blamed for something or someone losing or someone winning or some issue. It's just the it's just the way it is. The way that they could have done it had they gone back in time. I don't know if this would have been better. Would have been, hey, we don't we don't uh, we're neutral. You post whatever you want. If you don't like it, you block it. It's up to you. We're just a neutral. You know, it's place. interesting. It's like as as you get to that size, it's inevitable, right? It's like it's impossible to build something to that scale and not literally piss off. A, a t- and here's the thing, like you yeah. know, we we hear this all the time, right? Like uh, our marketing team most is don't pick up the brick, right? Don't pick up the brick, just because one loud mouth is bitching about this. It's not a pure representation of your entire business. The difference is, is when when Facebook is dealing with billions of people, yeah. a fraction is millions. It's its own government in a sense. It's, I mean, and that's why we get into this like political divide because it's everybody's opinion all smashed in one direction. Now businesses have to deal with that. Well, look, when you're at the top and when you're uh, you're making the most money or you have the most perceived power, you are a target for everybody. Look at uh, Bezos. Look at Amazon. He is now a target for, right. uh, by everybody. All of a sudden, he's either evil, not forget paying the, enough taxes. For, forget the hundreds of thousands of jobs he's created. Or, or the fact that <laughs> yeah. he or they, he literally created a company um, that has uh, arguably been one of the most positive I- impacts on our lives, especially now yeah. with either whether you own a small business or you whether you You can do good, but we don't want you to do that good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, know, All right. Just, you can win just a little bit well, better. <laughs> well, here's the deal. I don't feel bad either because if you're going to be at the top, you know what do they say about the about leaders, right? When you're at the top and you're leading- Yeah, everything is your fault. It's all that's, your fault. That's for, first rule of leadership is everything is yeah, your so fault. Yeah, so you're going to accept it. You want to be the bat, you want to be the dude or the girl? Yeah, yeah. I cash out before that. You know what I'm saying? That's what- <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm out before that. You know what I'm saying like I let me go back and fucking be invisible. Take your dude. money yeah. and bounce. Hey, yeah. speaking of like companies Disappear. pandering and shit like that, Justin, fucking Madden 2021. <laughs> I thought this Ugh. was a fucking joke. I what happened? Too. I thought this was a joke, but they literally they put Colin Kaepernick in Madden 2021, and I believe he's the, made the cover too. But he's not even in the NFL. He's not even good. He yeah. wasn't good. No, I know, but he he's wasn't not, even when he, he's not even on anybody's roster though. Hey, like, how does that work? Hey, what are his special moves? Like, <laughs> yeah, did you see what I posted? No. Yeah, <laughs> what did yeah. you say? Left bumper kneel, right bumper <laughs> kneel, right trigger kneel, left trigger kneel, yeah. D pad kneel. Yeah. Every, all he does is kneel <laughs> every time. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. he's yeah he's. I mean, you guys think it'll make they'll it'll increase their sales because now they're getting more attention around it. You know what? Here's the deal. If you're a diehard Matt, I was a big. I don't understand. I, play, I was the kid who bought Madden every single year for many many years, <clears throat> and. If you're a diehard Madden fan, you buy it no matter what. You don't give a shit about all this political bullshit. Like you're just like whatever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if you love the game, you're playing the game no matter what. But and maybe there is a group of social justice warriors that are gonna would never buy the game, but they want to buy it as I support. Think it's, I mean I think it's totally panicked. I think that. it's brilliant because I think I could just picture From two, a business perspective. I do. I think I can imagine two, you know, guys going to play a game against each other, one guy picking Kaepernick, the other guy being like, I'm going to crush you. You know what I mean? Just to, well, Because there's so much rivalry well, he, in football. Who's so he, winning? Uh, Colin Kaepernick. Well, he, he won in the Nike thing. He won. Like, look at him. Like, he's going so around. Was, he's so not the, even playing. So the winning, rumor is that money. they made his attributes better than Cam Newton, which that is, I would be fucking pissed if I'm oh, Cam. Oh, I get what? what you're saying. So, like, in, in I've never played the game. So, in the game, you have, like, skills, like his speed, his uh, his accuracy, his, like, you know, all these, yeah. just like. All and he the, wasn't that great, was he? And let me, so, by the way, no. that's a big deal in the NFL. So, like, Madden has become such a phenomenon that. Oh, and, you oh, brag about your skills? Oh, yes. Oh. Like, athletes, like, take that serious. Like, they ranked my speed at 97 this year. What the fuck? They, they think not I'm, do that. Oh, yes, they do. They made him better than Cam Newton. Yes. What? Oh, That's my God. That's such a crock, bro. Yeah, dude. <laughs> like, it's already bad enough that you like, bring someone. I'm offended on his behalf. Yes. yes. <laughs> like, yes, hey, Cam dude. Newton's awesome. Hey, he, Hilarious. Hey, Kaepernick hey. has made a lot of, he has actually monetized this pretty damn Hell well. Hell, yes, he? he has. And wow. you know what? Good for him. Whatever, but I just think it's hilarious all the companies that are pandering to all this shit, yeah. dude. It's getting out of control. Well, the consumers will decide if it was a good decision or not. Yeah, you know, if their sales are good or bad, that'll determine if more companies, you know, continue. Because did did Nike sell a lot because of him, or did they lose money? I think they did well, didn't they? They did. They did both. Uh -huh. It went it went one way, then the other. Way. That's it's hard to say, right? Like the what's the overall like? How did it do? It's just like the NBA. What we're seeing right now, like. You know, the definitely viewership is down, mm -hmm. but you know, I mean, NBA is making such a hard pivot that this is they're calling it the new NBA, right? And so, you know, maybe this is just a rough time right now, and maybe guys like me who are like dying to watch basketball and missing it so bad are just like, fuck it, I don't care anymore. <laughs> yeah. I want to watch the yeah. sport so bad because I love the sport. <laughs> deal with the bullshit. We'll you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's we'll interesting, yeah. dude. Did, I read a very interesting study. I thought this would bring up a, a conversation between us. Uh, so they did this study. On, they were trying to find out what kind of thinking patterns are connected to your um, the probability that you'll believe in a higher power. Okay, and they found something very interesting. So here's the summary of the study. This was a study done at uh, Georgetown University Medical Center, and the summary says it's in Science News Daily, by the way, great website. Individuals who can unconsciously predict complex patterns, so this is an ability called implicit pattern learning are likely to hold stronger beliefs that there is a God who creates patterns of events in the universe. So they connected the two things. So here's what they did, right? They did a test. Yeah, how do you test that? Well, here's they did a test, right? And so it's called, what did I, call, what did I say it was? Implicit pattern learning. So it's an unconscious ability to identify patterns. And they can test for this. And one test that they do is they have people watch a sequence of dots appearing and disappearing on a computer screen. Mm. And then people push a button for each dot, and then the dots move quickly. But some participants, the ones with the strongest implicit learning ability, began to subconsciously learn patterns hidden in the sequence mm. and even press the correct button for the next dot before the dot actually appeared. Now, here's what's crazy about this. The best implicit learners did not know that the dots formed patterns. So they were even unconscious of the fact that they were able to do this. So this is a skill mm -hmm. you could pick up on. This is, according to the study, is highly correlated with people who believe in a higher power. That's so interesting. your subconscious ability to pick up patterns, you know, maybe you can even call that a gift, I guess, mm. um, is also connected to 
people saying that well, oh, I, God exists. I, I, I think that's interesting because I've forever I've said this, like mm. whenever, and it's it always, in fact, I can't remember where we just were. We were somewhere, Katrina and I. And it's normally when we're in nature and I, you just see the, the, the beauty, the amazement of like how it all works. Right. The design and structure. Of it. Yeah. And, and it, I, I always catch myself saying stuff like, man, there's people that don't believe that there's something far more greater and powerful than us that laid this out. Because oh. it's so wild. Fractal to, geometry trips me out. It's just so, it's so perfect mm, that yeah. it, and, and everything works together so well to create this thing that we take for granted every day that we walk around on that I just think it's wild to think that there's people that just believe that like we collided with a fucking rock and then it all just happens. Yeah, just, well, I just think that's crazy to me. Well, it's, it is interesting to me. It is interesting that there's this subconscious, uh, you know, b brain pattern of identifying patterns. Uh, so the subconscious thing that's happening, uh, you can even, you might even be able to stretch and say, it's an ability, right? It's an mm. ability that you might not be aware of, almost like a, a sense or a feeling, because that's what subconscious things are, right? Like you just do things and you're not really aware of them. What was the percentage of people that had this ability versus people that had tested? The, you know, I got to look deeper in the study oh, okay. to see what that is. Um, but I'm I, just curious because, like, if that's like an innate ability, you know, that most people have versus just you know a select amount of people that can you know think in that direction. Yeah, it said the data suggests that if children are unconsciously picking up on patterns in the environment. Their belief or is more likely to increase as they grow up, even if they are in a non-religious household. Hmm. Likewise, if they are not consciously picking up on patterns around them, their belief is more likely to decrease as they grow up, even in a religious household. And you know what's funny about, about religion or spiritual practices? There is There always is an element of uh, faith, right? There's always an element of just feeling or just almost like, I hate the word, use this word, but knowing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it is interesting that they picked this up, and this was a neuroscience study really recent huh? interesting yeah isn't it fascinating no it's really fa it's fascinating because what i just said is like i have said that so many times and it's always happened in those moments where i'm out in nature or in awe of something right i'm just in awe of like what i'm looking at and trying to be present at the moment and, like wow this is just so wild how or or this is also what draws me to like the nature channel like I love watching that because it's just it's so fascinating to me on how many of these creatures and species oh. like intertwine and work together. You know, speaking to that, like uh, so National Geographic, I think you can get it through uh, uh, Disney Plus, but um, they have this show on there with this guy who uh, we we watch Josh Gates and we watch these like sort of archaeological type shows where they go to these old like ruins and ancient ruins and sites and things. And uh, the discoveries they're finding now in uh, like down in Mayan cultures, uh, these old, like these incredible um, cities that they're uncovering because of LIDAR technology. And so they're, they're going through this like really dense jungle that you, you literally can't see anything. And they're finding all these pyramid structures that are on top of like mountain ridges that they're finding. Oh, my God, this was an entire uh, military compound that was devoted to, you know, uh, fighting off this other invading culture over here that we just discovered like 10 other pyramids over here that never been seen before. What? It's insane. All this like discovery that's happening right now uh, that we we're not hearing about. You'd have to kind of like go find it for yourself. It's this, crazy. This is my favorite kind of stuff to, to look into because it teaches us about ourselves. Right. And, and what's what's wild. So much is more history out there. Way more. And there's theories out there that that you know that the human civilizations had built things and done things that are that were so old that it just we don't have any evidence of them because they're so old that they you know were you know weathered away or there was a natural disaster and so the stuff that we see we think oh the oldest is the pyramids and there's some theories that say hey some of the stuff even in in Egypt the, either, whether it be the pyramids or the sphinx that was there before the Egyptians. Right. Have you heard about this with the Sphinx? I have, yeah. Like the water erosion. They're like, yeah, the Graham last time. Graham Hancock. Yeah. He talks about that he kind of stuff. That, yeah. yeah, see, that's what uh, LIDAR looks like. So they yeah. can see what the structure is. Yeah, it's, it's like. a really crazy technology. I mean, it just removes all of the trees and uh, the shrubbery and whatnot and just gets it down to the elevated uh, uh, land. And you can see structures and everything uh, just clear as day. Oh, wow, that's, that's so, really wild. Yeah, that's so. See, there you go. Water, Sphinx water erosion. And they're saying that the it's a it's a hypothesis or a theory and that, the, that there wasn't water on Earth in that region for way before. Yeah. The Egyptians were there. So in other words, the theory is they found the, the, the Sphinx 
and then they built around it, or they found some of these structures. Well, and wasn't built that around like it. that was like the center of knowledge? Like ev- from all around the world, people would go there, and then the, the Library of Alexandria yeah. and everything, and then that all got decimated. Well, what I find that's very fascinating about this. Okay, so obviously we've been on Earth for a long time as a, a species is that sometimes we discredit the wisdom that has lasted for as long as it's had, Mm -hmm. but we shouldn't do that because it literally has stood the test of time. So a lot of these ancient spiritual practices and beliefs, and you see a lot of crossover across the world from one practice to another that maybe not even had contact with each other, that's real wisdom that's been around for a long, long time. And then even if you go in the more like what we know of, uh, like I've gone to Rome and they talk about the engineering that was required to build some of the stuff or, you know, the, with the with the Colosseum, how they fill it with water to have water. Uh, yeah. they, they didn't have electricity or didn't use electricity. It was all crazy engineering. No, water and, channels, it like toilets all figured out, all that stuff. Oh, it's super wild. Yeah. Dude, I figured out my neck, I, I, sometimes I get kinks in it and it's just something I've dealt with for a long time. But I think I finally figured out the mm. the, the cause of it, like 100% the cause of is it. Is it too high of a pillow? Yes. I had the same exact uh, either, awakening. Either too high or too low of a pillow. So when we started working with Pluto Pillow, right, you go on the website, you enter in, it, it personalizes a pillow for you. I did not realize how big of a, of a deal that was mm-hmm. because pillows for me now I'm realizing are either too high or too low. So if I sleep on my side, I'm in this kind of weird kink position and the Pluto pillow, because it's individualized to me, it's always perfect. So if I use another pillow, I start to notice the neck pain. Yeah, I kind of did. I, I mean, it, Courtney always makes fun of me because like she, <laughs> she calls me the princess in the pea because I have so many pillows, you know, I got, I got one too. I stuff between my legs now for my hips. Like a, like and a pregnant lady. Yeah, dude. <laughs> like, cause sometimes I lay I on my side okay. and I'm like, oh, yeah. you know, my, my hips are like short, bother me. Short legs do yeah, that. Yeah. Short, <laughs> short legs. It's a uh, short leg problems. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> so like I used to have two that I would stack and it was like, uh, um, I, I just realized this is way too high. And so I ordered one too, that was like smaller and in size. And it was like a complete night and day difference. Like I didn't wake up with that kink in my neck. I was like facing all the time. Yeah, dude, it makes a huge difference. That's yeah. the brilliance of the company. Dude. There was no, nobody was doing anything like this before. Well, I thought what, it was so smart. What I used to do is I would have my pillow, which was either down. Uh, I like down pillows or like something soft like that. And then I'd have to like throughout the night, yeah. crumple it up. Fold it yeah. or, you know, yeah, you like stuff the corners to like push it up to create yeah. the perfect height. But then as you go to, you know, as you sleep throughout the night, you end up losing, you know, its shape or whatever. This thing holds its shape. Obviously, it was individualized for your neck and your shoulders and the whole thing. And, you know, this is an issue for, especially for people that, who build a lot of muscle. You sleep on your side and you got delts and all that stuff. Your a normal pillow probably isn't going to be appropriate yeah. for you yeah. know for someone like you, and then for you know for for short legs. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a real deal. All right, our first question is from Brady Thomas. How do you develop the upper chest? Ooh, yeah, heavy barbell incline. Yeah, just you know, it's you know what's so funny is that it, we, growing up um, in the '90s and then early 2000s and working out the exercise for a long time. The exercise that every guy compared himself to other guys with was the bench press. That was the exercise that you... How you much did, you bench, bro? You'd never ask the guy how much they did anything else. It was always, how much can you bench? You know, it was like your, the way of, that you showed your strength. So it was a very, very popular exercise. Everybody did it. Mondays in gyms was like national bench day, and you'd see all the benches taken up. And literally, you know, in the gyms I would manage, they would have between five to six flat benches because they were always taken and used. And, you know, but bodybuilders, they used to do a lot of flat bench, but then later on, you notice that a lot of them mainly did uh, incline exercises. And they said that it would create a better, more aesthetic looking chest. I tend to agree with that. I think, I, although the bench press is a mm. phenomenal exercise for developing overall, you know, chest mass, I think in terms of aesthetics, most guys are probably better off m- mostly doing incline exercises. Yeah, I would catch myself. Uh just living near the bench uh, section, like Mondays, like that was like my thing. I would do incline, then I would do flat bench, and then I would do decline. They were like all in a row. 
And, you know, going through, I definitely found the the value in Incline Bench, and I actually enjoyed that and would feel like, you know, it did have an impact on the growth of my chest overall. I did not have that same feeling about the Decline Bench. I f- pretty much find that exercise worthless. I don't know what you guys think. I would I would go dips over, over a Decline. Yeah, yeah, Decline didn't do Any shit. Day. No, I didn't. I, so somebody asked me on my questions, actually, a similar question to this, that saying that, you know, is, is it true that uh, Incline uh, – bench press, it will do more for your chest development than any other exercise. And I said, I can make that argument, you know, uh, I can make the argument the other way too. Like if that's all somebody did, right. You doing something different would actually be of huge value. So if you were a hardcore incline barbell bench presser, and that's what you did mostly, and you never did flat or you never did dips, or you never did flies, then the obvious would be true. Doing one of those would actually do give you the most development in your chest. But I think that why the why that's true or why your point is true, Sal, is because I think that as if you once you get introduced into the bench press, it's like the staple move that you know for young boys for sure, like to measure strength. Like, oh, what do you bench, bro? Oh, mm-hmm. you you know. And when you tell someone what do you bench, you go off of the flat bench. You don't go off the decline. You don't go off the incline. It's right. like what do you flat bench is your your number. Mm-hmm. Because of that, you spend most of your time trying to get good at that, and you neglect. Uh, the incline bench. And I just think that, you know, the upper chest, when you develop the upper chest, the, it looks, uh, it makes your chest look so much more impressive. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it, for sure, this was a, a major focus when I first was getting into competing. And, you know, when you've been lifting for 10 plus years, you know, it's hard to, you know, I don't care how good at your programming or whatever, it's hard to see like really massive changes in your physique. And, that was probably one of the biggest changes I set out, and I've talked about it on the podcast more than once. I set this goal out, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna incline bench so much that I want to catch my incline bench to my flat bench. So that was like a big goal of mine, like how close can I get my numbers? Mm-hmm. Can I get my, in, can I incline almost as much as I flat bench? And the result of that ended up being the most impressive chest that I had ever built over the two decades of lifting, and so. Um, I always encourage uh, lifters to do more incline chest press, especially if you're if you're in this game for the aesthetics. You're trying to sculpt and build a physique. I think it's one of the best things you can do. Yeah, I, th- I think the fun the, the flat bench is great, especially when you're first starting lifting. But uh, an incline lift, incline lifts, your your whether it's up the barbell or a dumbbell or dumbbells, is really important for the aesthetic look. Women in particular, I think, uh, because they're because they have breasts, working the upper chest probably is going to give them more of aesthetic appeal um, than the flat bench. And then here's the thing. If you want functional uh, ability from your presses, uh, overhead presses are one of the most functional exercises. Incline presses are closer to an overhead press than a bench is. And then for that kind of functional strength like you would get from a bench press, I think dips are are really, really good exercise. They're, it's going to give you that. that oh, yeah. A similar kind of functional strength that you may need in a sport. And then if you think of the pushing movement in sports, it's often at an incline. Like if you're in football, you don't you very rarely push someone away standing straight up or leaning back. It's usually leaning forward, you're using your hips along with the press. That mimics more of an incline press. If you're throwing a punch in, you know, not that pressing necessarily makes you stronger at punching, but it does work some of the muscles that are involved. Incline probably translates better than a flat uh, as well. The other case I'll make for it, uh, besides just developing the chest, is that it's I I liked it later on. It, you know, when I started to do it more myself, I realized that it actually puts you in a, a more favorable position for uh, mechanics. It's easier for sure. Yeah. So uh, the incline, because part of getting good at bench pressing, uh, you 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 need to learn to be, be able to retract and depress the shoulders down. Uh, so you can engage more of the chest and you don't roll forward. And since most people, that's the common thing, right? So you get a client, you lay them on a flat bench. Uh, one of the hardest things to get them to understand is, you know, to not let their shoulders protract forward mm-hmm. and push with their their triceps and their shoulders and get, teaching them to be able to retract the shoulder blades back while they press to engage the chest. That's like one of the hardest things to teach when you're when you're teaching a client especially somebody who's fairly new to lifting. What I found was when I would take that client over to an incline, because of the angle, the angle naturally lets the the scapula kind of drop back down and like back into your back pockets, right? So it naturally pulls the shoulder blades back and down. So it actually was easier to get clients into the proper form and mechanics 
uh, on an incline. So I then began to teach that first before I would teach a flat bench once I pieced that together. Yeah. Now here's the thing too. If you want to see what kind of chest you'll develop, um, from focusing more on flat or more, cause flat definitely is probably more of an overall mass builder. You look at the chest of the seventies. They did favor the bench presses a lot. Look at Arnold Schwarzenegger, this really big chest, this kind of square look to it. Um, you could look at power lifters who, converted to to bodybuilding so they built a strong foundation of bench press um ronnie coleman was a power lifter before he became mr olympia and he still did a lot of bench press and you look at his chest and yeah he has a little bit more lower than upper but he's got this really big full looking chest that was hard to compete with whereas always focusing on the upper chest maybe you'll have less mass but you'll you'll have maybe more of a of a balanced look so they're both very impressive uh, both exercises are important but if your goal is upper chest then I would just do all upper uh, chest exercises when you're doing your presses. I wouldn't do any flat bench if that's an area that's lagging. Next question is from Jay Hines 62 What are the consequences of eating below the minimum daily requirement of fat? You know, um, not good. Yeah, uh, it could be hair, it skin, is hormones. Yeah, you're, uh, fat and protein are essential, okay? that Your body cannot make certain fatty acids that it needs for hormone production, uh, for nerve development, for brain function, uh, for connective tissue support and all that stuff. Same thing with protein. There's certain amino acids the body cannot make. In other words, if you don't get your the adequate amount or the minimum amount of fat that your body needs, the consequences can become very, very dire. Okay, This is not true for carbohydrates. Those are not essential. Not saying that you might not suffer from some you know, performance issues or whatever if you drop your carbs, but you're not gonna you're not gonna have major health issues like if you don't eat enough proteins and fats. You don't see this as much these days, but especially when fat was demonized, this was something that I saw with uh, female clients. It was very common. Yeah. I would see that, you know, they they'd have the, the dry skin, hair loss was one, um, their inability to feel full. They were always hungry. Mental fatigue was a big one. Um, and if they got tested for their nutrients, you would see that their fat soluble vitamins, you know, A and D, for example, would be kind of low. So the consequences are really not good if you don't get adequate fat. You need it. Your body absolutely needs it to thrive. I had several uh, female clients that this was the key that unlocked us breaking plateaus. You know, for months, I, you know, was managing calories on them, training's going good. I know they're, I, I know everything should be lining up that we should be seeing results. And their body was just staying stuck. And I remember looking at fat and going like, oh, you know what? Her fat's really low. I wonder if I boost her fat up a little bit. And I remember the first couple times I did that and it was just, it was mm -hmm. the key that just unlocked their body to start responding then again. So, you know, you just got to remember that like everything works together. So it's like, it's like a, a car engine when something is off, like the timing, timing belt is off that the car sounds different. It runs different. It feels different. Our bodies are similar in that way where, you know, even though this is maybe there's not something related to fat that is like directly correlated to your metabolism, but if, if things aren't operating smoothly, it can and will affect those things. And sometimes it's that simple for some clients that, oh, wow, you were just, you've been under consuming on a, on an essential macronutrient for so long that your body's not performing optimally. It's not running optimally. And just by me kind of boosting that up a little bit, all of a sudden the body fat starts coming off, energy levels, skin feels better, notice hair, like all these things started to change. Yeah, you also can, you, you all get clients who feel cold all the time. Um, I had a couple female clients who had fertility issues. We bumped their fat intake mm -hmm. up and they mm -hmm. got pregnant. In men, I've seen low testosterone. So I've had male clients who don't eat enough fat and they're, you know, they come to me with their testosterone readings and we just bump their fat intake and lo and behold, their testosterone levels go up. Sleep is another one. La mm. Not being able to sleep because you don't have enough fatty acids. It reminds me of what was it like late 80s, early 90s, the whole low fat, like mm -hmm. everybody was like so concerned about eating any fat. And that was like a big push uh, that you were because you eat fat, you're going to get fat. And like, I, I'm just wondering where this question, you, you know, is coming from in terms of like what uh, type of diet strategy they're trying to implement. If there's other, you know, like like I, I know vegans, like obviously there's going to be a big push to find fats from vegetables and find fats out there that they can get that aren't from animal products. But still, you got to do a lot of hunting uh, to make sure that you're getting adequate amounts. So I'm sure that is, is a bit of a struggle. Yeah. Omega-3 fatty acids are what vegans typically need to uh, supplement because it's really hard to get those uh, from vegetable sources. You can get 
sources that convert to that, but it doesn't do a very good job. But yeah, not eating enough fat is a bad idea. Yeah. It, it can cause some real problems. If it's for a short period of time, it's not a big deal, but you definitely don't, don't want to go too low. Next question is from Carlos V. U.S. Does running with a plastic bag over your upper body help burn more calories? Uh, you guys remember the you remember <laughs> wrestlers and stuff yes, doing this? It's you know? super common. Yeah, uh, for water, water weight. weight. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. For water weight. If you're unattractive, you could put it over your face too. And run around <laughs> and, yeah, you can do that. Yeah, you know what? Okay, here's the benefit of running with plastic bag over your body. There is uh, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah let's you, hear it. You might you might be able to train your ability to pick acclimate poop. <laughs> to acclimate to heat. You know, you might be able to increase your tolerance for discomfort calorie burning you're going to burn less calories here's why you can't perform nearly as hard go try to run as fast and hard as you do yeah. uh, normally with a plastic bag and you'll notice that you can't so whatever extra calories you may burn from the fact that it's harder is is more than negated from the fact that now you can't perform it heats like you, you it heats you up, drops it heats you up faster you you start sweating you feel like you're working more it's yeah. like that that's really it really what it your is your core temperature rises it makes you sweat that's it, that's it the benefit is the sweat it only makes sense to me if you're an athlete who is cutting water weight because yeah. here's the here's the deal with water weight the minute you go over and you drink a half gallon of water it's back it yeah. goes right back yeah so if you are cutting to make a weight because you got to weigh in because you're in a fight class and you need to drop two more pounds and you've got five hours till then, this makes sense to me. I understand what you're doing. If you're sitting in saunas, wearing trash bags, doing that makes sense to do that. Everybody else, I think you're a moron. Dude, yeah. I got in a big old thing with the wrestling coach, uh, one, one of my cousin's wrestling coaches, because he, he was a wrestler. He did very well. And he was uh, spitting. I saw him spitting outside, spitting in a cup. And then he was he wasn't looking very good. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm trying to make weight. I was like, oh no, we need to have a conversation. I mean, he's a sophomore, so your coach is literally telling you to go sweat and spit and not drink water to make weight. I'm like, go fight in the higher weight class and let me have a conversation with this guy. But these are some of the practices that they yeah. would do to to try to make weight. Super which dangerous. I, silly, silly. Yeah. If you're a kid, don't do this. If you're an adult, sure, you can do whatever you want with your body, but don't do this. To try to make weight. Oh for yeah, some and you see the body wraps. That was big business for a while too, yeah. where people would like get this moment where like, oh my god, like my waist is a little bit smaller, and then they drink uh, water and everything else the next day, and uh, boom, it's right back. Dude, just like magic. Just do this uh, next time. There's a UFC fight. Watch the weigh-ins. And then look at the fighters at the weigh-ins, and then look at the fighters the day of the fight. Yeah, totally different looking people. I know. Yeah, because they've sucked everything out uh, of their body. I used to, uh, I, I would have people in, in the gyms I'd manage, uh, do, and I, we, you know, we have signs that say you can't go in the sauna with a plastic bag or plastic over your body or oils that encourage sweating. But uh, at least I don't know once a month I'd have to go in there and kick some guy out for having a garbage bag over his body or, or rubbing wax all over, what is that called, yeah. you know, sweet sweat or whatever yeah, yeah. to oh, encourage yeah, sweating. Sweat. Yeah, there's there's really no oh, there's no health benefits whatsoever. It doesn't burn more calories. If anything, in, in my experience, you're burning less calories because your performance goes down into the crapper. Next question is from Ants Dope Life. Can smoking weed impact gains? Sure. Yeah. It's just life. Bro. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, definitely can't. You know, um, I, I talked to a cannabinoid scientist uh, recently. I had a great conversation with her, and we went down a whole bunch of different paths with cannabinoids. These are the, the, the compounds that are found in marijuana plants and hemp plants. There are some potential health benefits um, that you can get from cannabinoids. If they improve your health, then they might help you with your gains. But I, I can't, you know, I'm trying to think of all the people I know that smoke weed, how many of them have improved their health from smoking weed? I can think of one person out of the, I don't know, 30, 40 people I know who smoke weed. Most people who smoke weed like to get high. Yeah. And that kind of use is, yeah, it's going to take away from your gains. Cannabinoids, high dose, especially THC, probably negatively affect your anabolic hormones. Um, they predictably lower testosterone levels or anabolic hormone levels, I should say, in animals. They can do that in humans too, especially at, at high doses. Um, it can definitely, if it's used chronically, um, it can definitely reduce motivation, which right. that's not Drive a great- Drive goes down. Yeah, that's not a great thing for, for working out. Um, they can balance out inflammation if used at low doses, 
but just you know two or three hits from a joint is way higher than low doses. And at that point, you may be in- mm. influencing uh, inflammation in a negative way in terms of gains. So I, I don't think it's it's not something I'd say mm. go do this to improve I've your performance. I've heard long distance runners, though, like they do well uh, with marijuana. Under the influence. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, just during the, yeah. Yeah. Be- have, you ever done like a, have you ever done a long run? No, run? I haven't. Yeah, I've done no, mobility. Awesome. I love mobility. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Under the influence. No, it's all because it, you trail off, dude. You trail off in your thoughts. And I mean, it's like, it, when you know, when you hit that, like when you're running, right? It takes about 10, 15 minutes or so. The runner's high, yeah. Yeah. Then you hit that runner's high. And then, if on top of that, if you got a cannabis high on, on top of that, like you just kind of drift off into your own thoughts. You know what they all, very therapeutic. And mm. you know what they they attribute the runner's high to mm. um, natural cannabinoids that your body releases. Yeah, so it would make hmm. sense, right? Anandamide, I think that one's called two AG, if I'm not mistaken. And here's something you can do. Okay, if you want to utilize cannabinoids for potential benefits. Use uh, hemp oils, full spectrum. Stay away from too much THC. Too much THC has got some negative effects on the brain. Use things like CBD and some of the other cannabinoids that are non-psychoactive. What those things tend to do is they tend to increase your body's own production of its natural cannabinoids. This is not a bad thing. So if you're gonna if you're gonna notice any benefits from using cannabinoids, then you go in that direction. Not buying the weed at the dispensary that's you know 20% THC or smoking a joint with your buddy that's probably going to be detrimental so that's why I, you know for me nowadays i stick to things like ned which is the full hemp oil extract uh, you know full spectrum and that i don't notice the negatives if i were to have like weed from the dispensary you know, I, I get that you can have fun with it and all that stuff, but it's negatives is what I know. Yeah, you have to be real careful. I mean, this is a conversation I have with my younger brother a lot, right? Like, I, I was lucky that I didn't really even find cannabis. I mean, I, I had a bad experience with cannabis twice in my early 20s, and it wasn't even until I was like 30 that I really like smoke weed. And like the way I look at it right now, so I like weed the same way like a desperate housewife likes wine. And I look at it the same way. They're like, you got to watch it. You got to be careful of of that. Like, if am I smoking uh, every single night? Am I? Is it something turn into a cougar? Am I? Am I dependent (laughs) on this? Am I having the whole bottle type of deal? Like, and because there's so much positive messaging around right now with marijuana and the health benefits of CBD and yada yada yada. At the end of the day, uh, it could turn into uh, an addiction and and an issue like anything else. So if it's getting in the way of you learning more and growing and spending time on your business or working better at your craft or being a good husband or being a good father or being a good son, if it's if it's starting to bleed into those things and you have to be you only you know that you have to be self-aware of that to make that decision and most certainly can bleed into getting into your way of your gains if you know getting high ends up happening and you don't go to the gym because of that like that's it's an obvious issue but if there's ways that you can find it to complement your life and have balance I think there's nothing wrong with it. Just like I don't think there's anything wrong with someone having the occasional glass of wine to enjoy that with their dinner. But very easily, you can turn into somebody who has two or three glasses of wine every single night. And then Mm -hmm. at that point, when do you start asking yourself, okay, is this more of an addiction and something that I rely on more than something's actually helping me or complimenting or enhancing who I am? Yeah, and when they do studies on on cannabis and performance, uh, it clearly reduces power output and explosive uh, Mm. performance. So for lifting weights... Probably not a good idea. Not the best I, idea. I've done it before lifting weights. Terrible. It's it, not a great idea. Yeah. It just doesn't, for me, it definitely doesn't improve performance. Um, but maybe for long- Makes you more interested in it though. Maybe. Yeah. maybe for long, lower intensity, kind of long duration stamina based movements, maybe the pain killing effects, the fact that you're in this other state of mind might help with that kind of stuff. But for lifting weights and for explosive power- uh, definitely not a good idea. It doesn't make me stronger for sure. Yeah. I can't lift as heavy, you know, but I might be in the gym longer and I might, you know, focus more on squeezing and pumping the muscle or I might just lose my my focus and start looking at articles. Who knows? Yeah, or whatever walks by. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. If you want to watch the podcast, you can come check us out on YouTube. You can also find all of us on Instagram that includes Doug, the producer, you can find Doug at Mind Pump Doug. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Part of the benefits of learning and, and performing a good squat is the, the core and low back strengthening that you get from it. When, you, when people look at uh, squats as just a leg exercise 
and they try and switch it out with something like leg press, which absolutely requires zero core stability or low back stability.